Hello and welcome to the Crafty Zebra. I'm Lindsay and today I thought that we would create together. This is my refurbished book slash junk journal, art journal, glue book, I don't know. I've seen lots of different names on YouTube for this. Um, I just kind of consider it like my little book of treasures because it's where I put things or where I'm going to be putting things that are special to me. Um, so I just started this and I thought that it might be kind of fun to um, share this process with you guys because it's kind of fun. So this is my old uh, textbook um, from a few years ago before I got sick and I'm no longer able to work because of that. But I was, when I first got sick, I was going to school to um, get a second degree. So anyway, this is my textbook from that. So I decided as kind of like closure to that part of my life um, that I could work and be as active as I wanted to be. Just kind of a, a good way for my brain to say kind of like goodbye to that season and uh, hello to this new season. Um, so painting over this and stuff has been really therapeutic for me. It's been a lot of fun. I also picked this book because it has a really good, I mean, it's big and thick and I thought that it would uh, hopefully stand whatever abuse I did to it. We're going to find out. I have not ever done this before, so <laughs> this is a first for me. Um, so I'll show you the cover is just this fabric. I have some clips on it. I just glued it on last night. So I have some clips on it just to make sure that's really good and tight while I'm opening and closing and whatnot. Anyway, and there's some decorative stuff on the back. This hangs on there too, but it fell off. Okay, so I'll show you. Got a pocket here just to put random whatever's in. <clears throat> I did this page. It says life is a beautiful ride. Um, this page. Kind of go through quickly. This is one of my favorites. I love the shiny kind of like plasticky textured feel of this. I don't know. This is one of, um, I drew this. I painted, I drew that. <laughs> um, and these are from books. Um, this pocket, this page isn't done yet. I still need to paint this, but I've got a pocket here. This one's kind of fun. This was from some um, old children's books that were falling apart. This page is kind of fun. It's got some pictures and things. This one, here's a little pocket here. I need to figure out how I want to decorate this part. But here's a little pocket here I learned how to make last night on the YouTubes. And I, these are some cards from my husband and I's wedding. So I stuck those in there. It's definitely things I want to keep, um, keep track of. This page I need to paint over. But it's got a pocket here and a pocket here. And like this little bag here. I made these out of the uh, pages from this book. Okay, and then this is where we're going to work today, okay? Um, and while we do that, I thought I would kind of talk about my story a little bit more. Um, my hope is that this kind of being more casual setup, that um, it'll be more comfortable because the first video I did was so awkward. Um, so <laughs> hopefully this will be better. Okay. So these are some scraps that I kind of had paired together before um, that I knew. I just kind of liked how they look together and I wanted to try to do something with them. So this is going to be the inspiration for this spread today. Um, and I, I noticed as I've been doing these, like what I put out for inspiration, most of it I don't use. I just kind of tend to use like the colors and stuff. So we'll see if that's what happens here. <laughs> Stand by. Um, but the first thing I do, I don't trust these pages. 
these pages are just textbook pages. This one's still drying, so I just glued this. Um, first thing I wanna do is get down a collage layer to strengthen up these pages so they stand the test of time a little bit better. Again, this is my first time doing it, so you know, if any of this works or not, I'm not sure. I just, I wouldn't consider this as much a tutorial as like a create with me, chat with me, you know? That's one of my favorite things to do is just to kind of craft and chat. Um, I like, you know, keeping my hands busy and whatnot. All right, so anyway, these are, this is my collection of collage pieces. Okay, so we're gonna use that. I think I'm going to, what do I wanna use? That is the question. Um, I think I'm gonna use gesso to put this down because I don't care to see any of the stuff that's on the papers. Um, gesso is like, or at least the kind I have, a semi-transparent. So I want to use this because, um, or I'm, I'm using this. Okay, let me just start that over. <laughs> so this is semi-transparent, um, but it also covers it up. Like it kind of gives it like a, a creamy type look to it. So these papers are just, I'm just using to strengthen up these pages. So I don't care that I can't see these because this is going to cover most of that up. When I get to the layer that I want to be able to see, I'm going to use probably matte medium or something else that will dry transparent. Um, and then I have Mod Podge too, which I love, but we're not going to use yet. That'll be at the end. Um, and I've seen recommendations on Facebook, or not on Facebook, but on YouTube to spray the pages with this acrylic spray stuff. I bought acrylic coating. Um, I just haven't sprayed them yet. So, um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we will see. So, I'm trying to think what I want to do. I'm going to tape this the rest of the way. I want to figure out how to make some cuter, cuter, yeah, cuter little page turner tags. I'm sure there's a plethora of information on the YouTubes. So I'm sure I'll be able to find something. <clears throat> now, I got some of my, like, the techniques I'm going to use. There's a YouTuber that I watched, and I can't think of her name offhand. But um, maybe at some point in this video, I'll, I'll look it up so I can let you know her name and her channel name. And I'll put it in the the information underneath the video. <laughs> I'm so new. Um, yeah, because I, I am really, really inspired um, by her process. It's just really neat. And she breaks it down really good. I don't use it. Um, I don't go to the T. But I like to, I like how she kind of tells you the way certain materials will work or not work with other materials. Um, so I, I use those guidelines a lot. So, um, like I said, it, it's not exact what I do. It's not her exact system, but, uh, yeah, check her out. She's awesome. I still teach you all the things. I don't know if I'm going to be like, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. Isn't this cute? Okay. So what we're going to do is try not to spill things, which is what's happening. We're going to get our gesso and we're going to put this aside. I need a cup. Do I care what color? Like if I, hmm. Let me grab a fresh one. Fresh-ish. It doesn't matter that it has some color in it because we're not gonna be, we're gonna paint over or whatever. Paint ew, that was still wet. That's nice. <laughs> we're gonna paint over. Paint over. Good gravy. Okay. The words <coughs> they are not easy. 
All right. So my EDS story continued. Um, I think I'm going to get these guys. I don't wash my brushes very often, like not as good as I should. Um, although I don't know, I've not seen any artists that, uh, on YouTube anyway, that's where I get most of my exposure, but I haven't seen anybody say, oh, I'm so good at washing my brushes. It seems like everyone's like, I need to wash my brushes better. This is my paint rag. It's disgusting. Um, and also beautiful. It's clean. Like, I mean, it just came out of the wash, but it's, you know, got paint and glue and whatnot. So it looks gross, but to me, it's kind of cool because, I don't know, there's so many projects on here. I don't know. It's neat. I like to save things, which is why this, this type of journaling is, I think, going to be, hopefully going to be a good fit for me. Because this is a place to put all those things that you save. Okay, so we've got our brush. We've got our gesso in our <laughs> dirty cup, but it's okay. It's just like paint in there. <clears throat> um, so my story. When I was... Make sure I don't drop this on my lap. Um, when I was a baby, I started having health problems. Like I was getting sick all the time and I was getting um, urinary tract infections all the time. Um, and I didn't know why. So I was in and out of the hospital. Um, they eventually figured out that my immune system was crap. Um, and so that kind of became the focus of uh, my entire existence, essentially, <laughs> when I was a kid. Um, it was, everything was centered around, um, I'm losing my track of, my, my track of, you know what I mean, <laughs> everything, yeah, everything became about the immune system, because that was, there were other symptoms and things, and I think that the doctors kind of explained them as, you know, these are a result of her immune system being so poor. I'm not sure. I was so little, I don't, you know, the parts that I do remember, I probably remember inaccurately because our brains are weird like that. But, um, yeah, they focused on the immune system because that was what was making me the sickest and the biggest threat, um, to me. So that was years and years and years of in and out of the hospital, different medications, experimental medications eventually, blah, 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 blah. Fast forward, um, my immune system started getting better when I was like 12. So from like 11 months to 12, this was all kind of, um, going on. So by the time I was 12, my immune system seemed to be getting better. So, um, that was, you know, something to celebrate. It was like, woohoo, <laughs> that's good news. Um, I was responding to a, an experimental medication that my doctor, um, my doctor had gotten us on. Like I said, I was young, so I don't remember a lot of details, but I did like two trials of that medication and then after the second trial my immune system responded um and i started getting immunity is this yeah it is okay um yeah so my immune system responded i started getting allergies which my immunologist i said that weird <laughs> my immunologist was so excited that i was getting allergies because it meant i was having an immune response um so it, it seemed like things were going pretty good but I kept having my childhood in teenage years, I suppose. I kept having some strange things. Um, always a lot of trouble with my joints, joint pain, my joints doing weird things. I now know that my joints were subluxing. Um, I did not know at the time that's what they were doing. If I did know, maybe I wouldn't have played with them so much. <laughs> um, but I think anybody who has EDS understands that, you know, they, they call it like our party tricks when our, our joints and our, our limbs and stuff can do weird things because we're so hypermobile with EDS. Um, 
yeah, that tends to get people's attention when you're a kid. And so, you know, you're a kid, so you show off to your friends and uh, you don't realize that you're actually uh, hurting yourself. You're actually doing damage to your joints. So anyway, um, so I was having joint stuff. I was having some weird, like, I would get my ears pierced and my uh, skin on my ear would heal over my earrings or attempt to. Um, and certain like scars wouldn't heal properly or close. I remember I have a scar in my ankle that be, it's just open because it never closed. Like my body put, I'm not even, you can't see me. <laughs> um, it's not even like my body put no effort into bringing the skin back together. Um, so that kind of stuff kept happening. I had my daughter when I was 17. That's a whole nother video. If anybody wants more information on that, I can talk about that, but not what this video is about. So anyway, I had my daughter when I was a teenager, um, had a lot of problems in my pregnancy with my joints again, and my back and my hips. They had to pull me out of school because I was um, injuring myself every time I stood up or moved. I think what was probably happening, I was probably subluxing things, but I didn't know what that was at the time. Um, but I think that's probably what was happening when I would stand up, I would hurt myself, um, at school. So, um, yeah. So, and then there was some weird healing issues after having my daughter. I won't go into that because that's TMI. So little bits and bobs kind of were happening. And then as I started getting older, um, and not even that old, I mean like in my 20s, I was getting more back pain, more neck pain. Um, I was getting stomach issues. I was having a lot of um, what I now know are episodes of presyncope and POTS attacks, but I didn't know what those were at the time. I was having a lot of heat intolerance. I was getting a lot of neuropathy symptoms. And so I started eventually going to the doctor about what seemed to be all these random things. Um, and it was doctors and doctors and specialists and specialists and tests and tests. And of course, everything came back normal except some small things like arthritis in my neck and my back, stuff like that. Um, but everything, everything would come back, all the tests would come back as that it didn't explain my symptoms. Um, so, fast forward again to 2015, um, I was diagnosed with small fiber neuropathy. Finally, you cannot see anything that I'm doing. Why I need to like, hello, okay, <laughs> let me rearrange here. And I just put my hand in glue, so that was fun. Okay, I'll try to give you some kind of... There we go. Okay, that should be better. So, 2015, they did a sweat test or a QSART, QSART, QSART test, something along those lines. And they said I had small fiber neuropathy. So that's, um, in our, our nerve fibers, we have large nerve fibers. Like everyone knows, um, well, I won't get into it. Let me not get too far off topic here. But you have large nerve fibers and you have small nerve fibers. There's neuropathy that you can get in those large nerve fibers. And there's a different kind of neuropathy that you can get in the small nerve fibers. Um, you can have both. Um, or you can have one or the other. Uh, as far as I know, still, I just have small fiber neuropathy. I've not been tested in years and years. And I have no plans to do that again because the testing was not comfortable. Okay. So... They said I had small fiber neuropathy, and along with that was autonomic neuropathy. So if you're not familiar, the autonomic nervous system is the part of our body, the part of our nervous system that controls the things that we don't control, like breathing, heartbeat, blood pressure, temperature regulation, things like that. Um... And so 
yeah, I had to start learning about these new diagnoses that I had. I was happy to have a diagnosis. Um, at the time, I, as well as my doctors, well, I think we kind of thought that that was the answer to everything. That um, relief was extremely short-lived um, because I, now that I, I had a name to it, you know, I would get all these other symptoms and I would say, well, hey, doc, is this a part of that neuropathy that I have? And they would say, uh, no, actually, that's not, that's not it. That's not what that is. That's something else. Uh, so eventually we started testing again. Um, eventually it started to be evident, evident, clear, I don't know, that we hadn't found all the answers. Uh, so the research into, well, eventually my doctor diagnosed me with POTS, um, which is a type of autonomic um, dysfunction or autonomic neuropathy. Um, I think those words are all interchangeable. I could be wrong though. It's happened before. <laughs> um, so yeah, my doctor said I, w I was having heat intolerance problems. I was getting um, really nauseous and shaky and weak and short of breath uh, if I would get too warm, too hot. So I talked to my doctor. He said, yep, that sounds like POTS. It sounds like you have POTS. So he diagnosed me with that. Uh, he was correct. <laughs> I do have POTS. <laughs> the way I said that, I didn't want to say he just like said it and, you know, I do have POTS. He was correct on that diagnosis. So anyway... <clears throat> um, so that was a new thing to look into. So I'm doing the research. I'm looking up POTS. I'm looking up small fiber neuropathy. I'm looking up autonomic dysfunction, uh, mostly in YouTube because I love me some YouTube. It's just kind of like my learning. Um, that's how I learn. You know what I mean? To like see and to hear. Um, so I just respond really well. I just really like YouTube as opposed to like internet searches. I get distracted reading something and then I get frustrated because um, I get distracted easy. I think we all probably do in this day and age, right? Look at that. I put I put the book here so you can see this page and then I started working over here. What the heck? It's like I don't want you to see. <laughs> okay. Sorry to pay attention, Lindsay. These videos will get better. I just, I need to just keep trying. I need to keep reminding myself and encouraging myself that I need to keep trying. Okay, anyway. So the research on YouTube led me to a lot of um, a lot of other YouTubers that had POTS. And the pattern that I seemed to notice was uh, most of, if not all, of the YouTubers that I was finding that had POTS also had this thing called Ehlers-Danlos Ehlers Syndrome, EDS. Uh, so I, that got me kind of like, I kind of think, I think I put it in the back of my mind from what I was seeing of EDS, it seemed like something I didn't want. <laughs> I mean, who wants anything, right? But I mean, it was like, oh, geez, I hope that that's not what's going on, you know? Um, but in, uh, couldn't tell you what year now, two years ago? Yeah, something like that. Um, I was at work. And I was also going to school for a second career. That's a whole nother subject. Um, but that's when I was using this book was in that time. So I was going to school and trying to work full time. And I was at work one day and I was starting to get some of these symptoms were kind of creeping in before that. I won't get into all that. That's too much detail. <laughs> that's, that's too much gabbing and this is already so long and I've only done like the first layer of our project here. Okay. So, um, yeah, I was at work and I started feeling awful and I felt like my heart was racing and I looked at my smartwatch 
and I was correct. It was. <laughs> it was like between 160 and 180 beats per minute. Um, I don't remember what my blood pressure was. Um, they called the paramedics and I went and got checked out, went to the ER. Um, and after that, I wasn't able to work anymore. That the pots, I mean, it just kind of felt like everything came down at once, like in a tornado. And it it seems like I've heard that often with people with um, similar conditions or BDS. That it was just like all of a sudden everything just rained down. Like my body just said, yeah, done. Um, I was admitted to the hospital in the hospital I couldn't walk more than just a few minutes I mean it was just like all of a sudden it felt like my body just completely like caved in on itself um lots of symptoms I won't get into all that but um I could in another video but yeah so that kind of is the first half of my EDS story <laughs> um yeah, that was a big chunk of it. So I think I'm going to pause this here and I'm going to let my glue dry. Um, and I will be back. Okay. All right. I am back. I went and looked through my um, papers and scraps and all kinds of things and found some more things for this page. Um, the video is already very long. I'm not going to edit it as much as I can avoid. <laughs> I think that's just best. Um, but it's very, very long. So I think I'm going to make this a part one um, of my EDS story. And then I'm going to get into part two. So for you, uh, goodbye. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, and I will be posting part two soon. Thanks. Bye.